Hi everyone, welcome to another one of my video. Today I've got a 1988 Honda Legend KA4. So that is the four-door sedan version. Um, this car is uh, quite a milestone for Honda because this is the one that they actually really try to get into the luxury uh, luxury car market. So this one, when it came out, it was one of the first Honda car that was offered with a V6 engine. It's the first Honda car to have a driver's side airbags and the first one to have a speed sensitive power steering. So that means when the car is stationary, the power steering is very soft, but when it's high speed, the power steering becomes a bit harder as well. It's the first car that came with uh, ABS for Honda and it came with seat belt pretensioner as well and it was the first i think front wheel car in the world to have uh, traction control as an option as well and this car was i think designed in cad computer software and it was had only a drag coefficient of 0 0.32 and it's a very quiet car they did a test uh, and at 100 kilometers per hour the car actually had 63 decibel interior noise that is really really uh, good and uh, this one here I'll just quickly show you the rear seats as well uh, leather rear seats and four seats sunroof let me quickly show you the engine bay and uh, the boot as well normally this car comes with 15 inch lol this one has been changed with a 17 inch one now back into the engine bay and the boot here is the engine bay 2.7 liter v6 24 valve single overhead cam engine now let's have a look at the boot as well here's the boot Nicely carpeted for insulation and quite spacious as well. Next, we are going to look at the interior. Before we get inside and have a look at the interior, I should mention about an interesting feature of this car, and plus a similar car like Toyota Presida or Mazda 99 in this generation is uh, if the car is locked and if you try to open up the car at night time you'll see this uh, section uh, slides up to indicate the keyhole is here and also this uh, driver floor mat lights up as well to see now these uh, seats are power adjustable back and forth and the tilt as well and the height adjustable is manual with this button we got the power window controllers here with all the power window controllers and power window function on and off for the passengers with this button there and we've got uh, the central locking uh, mechanism switch here as you get inside on the car we see on the left hand side we've got the power window controller for the passenger the left hand side vent the center vent the digital clock here and a small storage box there another storage box the air conditioning controller is very simply layout different vent position Close the circuit and open circuit. Air conditioning switch on and off. Temp the fan switch there, temperature knob, and fresh air inlet with this button there. The factory stereo is a Pioneer stereo with four speaker cassette radio, which has been swapped over with a Pioneer MP3 with auxiliary input as well. Now, the transmission of this car is a four speed automatic transmission with sports mode, which says with S. It is nothing but a D3, which will hold the gear to up to 3.3, but once it's in here, if you press this button S4, it will select the fourth gear, obviously at higher RPM. Another small storage box and cigarette lighter there and your ashtray there as well. Small storage box again. We got the, can't really see, there you go. You got the interior light switch there as well and on the left hand side we have the window defogger the hazard light the cruise function on and off the light intensity for the instrumentation panel then we got the sunroof controller there 
and the power mirror controller is here obviously right hand side you've got your indicator stick the cruise function on and off setup resume or cancel button is here integrated with the steering wheel then you have your uh, wiper controller there on the center instrumentation panel we have I'll turn the lights on and on the left hand side you obviously got your RPM then your speedo in the center on the left hand side on the right hand side on the left you've got your fuel gauge and coolant temperature fuel warning lights on the top as well and the bottom you got your S indicator plus I'll try to focus in as you open the door it'll tell you which particular door is open as well very good interior for his time and now let's have a look how well she drives all right let's take her for a quick spin um, I have the car for almost uh, two weeks now um, let's start with the interior the interior is quite good given that it's almost 27 years old the leathers are pretty good looking um, the air conditioning controller is very simple now. The cruise control is uh, works pretty fine as well. I especially like these side vents uh, on the door. So on a, on a foggy day or a rainy day, this section is clear, so you can see uh, the side mirrors very easily. Uh, the engine is very good. It really loves to pull. Um, it makes 120 kilowatts of power at 6,000 RPM. 230 newton meter of torque at uh, 4500 rpm the fuel economy is not bad either for a six cylinder car i think the combined fuel economy is 10.1 liter per 100 kilometer which is uh, quite decent um, interior is quite actually inside uh, the suspension is a little bit soft because as i said when honda designed this vehicle they actually were looking into uh, getting to the luxury segment of the market so the interior uh, the suspension is a bit a bit soft but because all the early 90s honda or late 80s honda used to sit solo on the ground even with a softer suspension uh, it doesn't mind the corners at, at all the rear seats are quite spacious quite uh, enough uh, leg room uh, for uh, you know for tall passengers and the uh, boot capacity is quite big as well so overall very good car to own so if you find one in good condition uh, i would recommend to buy one uh, alternative to this car would be any toyota crusaders or a mazda 99 or a 5 series bmw thank you for watching my video i'll catch you next time Bye.